Hello. I've said it before and I'll say it again, but when you get percussion and melodies firing off at the same time in the same case, it is a hell of a eureka moment, at least it was for me. It's the moment where you suddenly recognise that your modular is capable of outputting fully formed ideas. You don't necessarily need your computer anymore, except as a glorified tape machine. Ideas can flow forth. This thing becomes like the greatest groove box that money can buy. You'll need to have invested in all of the composite elements, obviously, to make that happen. Uh, that is, sequences, drum modules, uh, or drum patches, and of course, voices and things to actually make synth sounds. But more's the point, you'll have to lock all of those composite elements together. You'll have to lock the timing of your sequences and your drum sequences together. And while all good sequences have sync inputs and outputs so that you can lock their tempos together, um, which is obviously pretty essential, everything's bopping along at the same speed. And we don't want just everything happening at the same time necessarily. If we're looking at using our modular as a way of actually creating complete ideas, we're going to want some variation. We're going to want some contrast. Life. So, spare a thought for clock dividers and multipliers, because these are incredibly useful devices that allow us to plug a gate sequence in, just a repeating sequence of gates, and get all of the musical divisions spat out. So it turns one kind of constant clock into lots and lots of other musically divided and useful clocks. So quite literally, from the input one, you end up with the halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, seventh, and eighth divisions. And if you have an expander on your um, clock divider that's capable of it, you can get even more. And these divisions are immensely useful when it comes to creating kind of timed events and building bigger sequences right in our modular. The clock divider I'm looking at here is the 4MS rotating clock divider, which you may see in lots of cases. This is available pre-built and it's also available as a DIY kit. It's not too hard to make if you can make Lego and you can solder. You can pretty much follow along. I managed it. I'm sure you can too. I do also have the breakout, but don't worry about that. We're not going to use that today. So for the first patch, let's play around with timed events, like actually having things happening on the beat, but at different times, using the clock divider as a kind of um, event generator, as it were, a kind of um, sequence shifter. So. Where is my cable? Here we have the um, Expert Sleepers Disting, which is a very fabulous module that can do 16 different things. And at the moment, I've got it as a um, LFO. You can see from the B output that there is a bipolar LFO, square LFO, on, off, on, off, emerging. So I'm going to use him as the sort of master clock. And I'm going to stick it into the input. And you'll see that the 4MS rotating clock divider starts to light up. It's showing us what's coming in, which is this square wave LFO. And accordingly, you can hopefully see the little lights emerging on the sort of musical um, divisions. And as I slow that down, it slows up, slows down. And as I speed it up, it speeds up. Very handy. So um, let's now use this as our kind of master clock source. So we've got that going. I'm going to use the one output which is just basically a copy of this input and i'm going to stick it into the metropolis and the metropolis is set to external here she is so external the metropolis is running and as i speed that up and slow it down it should change accordingly yeah right so now let's actually use a second sequencer as well so i'm going to take um perhaps the eighth output eighth division and stick it into the pressure points and brains and you'll see that the pressure point starts to advance and it's happening exactly on the same the eighth um, divided down division so i'm going to use the pressure points as a modulation source to mess with the metropolis and it's going to do it what i'm going to do is transpose the sequence and you're going to hear that the transpositions happen on the beat et voila so What you're hearing here is the Atlantis being fired off by the Metropolis. That's the one volt per octave input and the gate input going into Atlantis. And the clock is this one here. But you can see that the pressure point is moving along because the pressure point is shifting on every eighth beat, as it were. 
So if I connect one of the output lanes of pressure points, and pressure points is just basically lots of um, stored voltages um, that get outputted when the light is on a various knob, it's that knob that's being outputted from the CV output. So if I stick that into the aux input of the Metropolis, which I've got set as a kind of um, shifter, um, Suddenly, all eight stages of the pressure points are shifting our metropolis sequence, and they're doing so on the beat because we're using a clock divider as the sort of clock source, which is really cool. There's nothing at all to stop us from yanking out the output, stopped advancing, sticking it into one of the different outputs, which will mean that it will be shifting in different points. So in this way, you can build really long sequences. Otherwise, I'd have to clock pressure points with just an unrelated LFO, and it wouldn't necessarily be happening on the beat. That might be cool, but it's really good for making timed events to have a clock divider as a kind of master source, so we have all these useful divisions that we can tap. Ace. Okay, and in the second example of timed events, um, something slightly different. We're not actually going to use any sequences at all, but we're going to generate a sequence nonetheless. What we're going to do is we have got three oscillators set up here. So I have the Atlantis um, doing its whole thing, um, making an awesome sound. I have the Cylonix Intelligel Cyclebox, which is a digital oscillator set up to create its own sound. And I also have the Cylonix Shapeshifter Digital Oscillator 2 set up to create a sound as well. These are all tuned separately. And what I've got is the IntelliGels has its own VCA built in, so I'm using its envelope generator. And I've got the Make Noise Math, the two trigger inputs. And this is basically an envelope generator as well. So there's no sequenced element here. It's just that I've tuned the three notes to different um, pitches. So if I start to connect them to directly to the clock divider, That, I think, is uh, this. You see, on every third, that fires. The Atlantis. And then the last one is the cycle box, which... Oh, no, the shapeshift is actually going through the post-lawsuit filter here from SDG Sound Labs. And of course, we could tune these to be similar elements that would almost be like a chord playing off of each other. You can almost get like a whole little sequence going just by triggering three independent voices. And of course, it's this musical division that makes this exciting. And nothing at all stops us changing these. Thank you. 
talked about. Wicked. Okay, so another application of that idea is actually just beat making um, with a rotating clock divider or any clock divider really. Although there is a cool thing that we can do with the rotating clock divider, I'll show you in a sec. So maybe you can't see my drum modules, but I've got a whole slew of the tip top audio um, drum modules, which are very good. Um, so this is the 808 bass drum. And if I stick that into there, bass drum. I'll take off the reverb um, so that you can hear it without that. So every fourth, you hear a bass drum. It's a bit like having a sort of very budget trigger riot, um, although the trigger riot is slightly different. Nice. So we can start to get a beat just from a divider. So open hi-hat. And then the closed hi hat. Sweet. Once again, we can slow and speed up the whole thing. Of course, we can stick our bass drum in. Pretty neat. Don't need a drum sequencer to make drum beats. Very cool, um, and once again, made possible by having a ton of related musically clocked gates all working together. Let me now show you um, what happens if we use a clock multiplier. I don't have the um, sister module to this, which is called the shuffling clock multiplier, um, but a very useful module made by 4MS. You see it used a lot by um, Richard Devine, um, who's using a lot of the time using clock dividers to make beats. Um, although he does also use the peg, uh, which is this very awesome um, envelope generator, although it can be used as a clock multiplier. So if I take the um, one of the clock divider outputs, let's say this one, and put it into the ping input, it basically um, tempo locks a envelope generator. And if I hit cycle, now this is triggering our hi-hat. And if I speed it up, it's got a very, 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 very neat ability to divide and multiply. Um, I can go slower, this is fourth, and up fourth. You see that it's all on the musically divided sort of um, beat. I'll try with the other. Super useful. And it's the same principle as the shuffling clock multiplier that gives us multiple outputs. What's wicked with using the peg though, is that these there is a CV input, and this is a very Richard Devine trick. So let me show you. If I take a envelope generator and stick it into the divide modulator, and actually I could just use, let's clock that side of it too, with this, put that into the ping input, and then when we cross modulate the two uh, like this, what's happening is that one side of the peg is modulating that divide time for us. So you're getting this kind of skittering hi-hat that slows and speeds up on the beat. So we're getting this kind of slow LFO modulated. Now the reason this is called a rotating clock divider is it has a very, very neat trick, which is that there's a rotate input here. And if I stick a DC offset, and the math is really good at doing this, what will happen is it will shift the outputs. They're labeled as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
But if we apply an offset, it'll shift, it will rotate what actually emerges from those outputs. So one will become two, two will become three, and accordingly around and around. Let me actually plug those hi-hats back in here so that you can just hear the rotating clock divider doing its thing. So the pingable envelope generator isn't doing anything now. We're just clocking everything with the rotating clock divider. But once again, if I grab this DC offset, it's going to rotate all of the outputs. it's kind of fun to mess with this by hand so one other tip stick a sample and hole generator into the rotate input and it will modulate your beats for you and if you have something like the Turing machine which is just up here out of shot and um, that's a sample and hole generator um, which can be looped so you can get these kind of funky shuffled beats um, happening in a kind of musically um, randomized but kind of um, made sensible way does that make sense as in you've got a little random loop which well, chosen randomly but the loop obviously just repeats very cool beat making with a clock divider sweet <laughs> Okay, so for our final trick, um, we have the Atlantis being triggered by the Metropolis. And the Metropolis is running under its own clock. We're not actually using the rotating clock divider to um, do out at the moment, anyway. Um, but nothing at all stops us running this bad boy at audio rates. And because it's a clock divider, what it will do is act as a sub-octave generator. So if I take the, um, what we're hearing at the moment is the um, triangle output, sorry, the saw output of the um, Atlantis going through its own filters and whatnot, going into a mixer up here, um, just slightly out of shot. Here's the square wave direct output from the Atlantis, and I'm going to go stick it into the clock divider, and it all lights up furiously, because what's happening is it's actually dividing the audio rate thing. And as you might expect, what happens is that if I then tap these outputs, stick them into a mixer, we hear a kind of divided down version of the um, input signal and I can tap those simultaneously and I'm using the swear wave here which has a kind of pulse width sound going through the clock divider. I can tap the uh, saw. And it gives you this wicked kind of harsh um, square wave vibe. Because of course it's just square waves that are emerging from here. And there's no filtration occurring here. Do well to stick this through a filter. So let's do that. I've got the um, post lawsuit low pass filter, which is made by STG Sound Labs. It's actually based on the ARP filter, um, post lawsuit being the one that they made in later life, um, having to change the one that was in the Odyssey. So I can stick those outputs. And what's cool is that we don't just have a straight, um, you know, down one octave sub. We've got all of these interesting um, divisions, including like sixths and fourths and thirds, which are going to be sort of like, um, you know, tuned sub octave. It's going to start sounding like a chord, um, which is very cool. Signal output of the lawsuit back into here.
How cool is that? Tons of awesome things that you can do with clock dividers and multipliers. Simple, boring, homework sounding like things, but that in a bigger system and a smaller one too, give you tons of useful options and let you create musically divided events as well as hacking them, turning them into kind of sub-octave generators. And there's a whole lot more cool stuff you can do with them too. Hope that was useful. We'll catch you again soon. Bye.